Welcome back. President Trump calling for an expedited appeal after yet another judge halts his border agenda in the courts. But we're also learning that that same judge also donated over $20,000 to former President Obama's campaigns before being appointed. So is the left's constant judge shopping turning the border crisis into a constitutional crisis? Here to debate it is Republican strategist Peter Van Voorhees and former consultant for the Department of Homeland Security, Mustafa Tamiz. Thank you both for joining us this morning on this Memorial Day. We appreciate it. Great to be with you. So as we begin our discussion, let's take a look at these donations specifically involving this judge whose name is Judge Haywood Gilliam. And his donations, we kind of can split it apart for you, over $21,000 for Barack Obama campaign, uh, over 4500 for the Democratic National Committee, and about 3100 for Covington Burlington LLP PAC, which is a PAC that actually supports uh, candidates from both parties. So his contributions totaled around $29,000. So I I will start with you, um, uh, Peter. In terms of what we're calling judicial activism, is this appropriate? Well, it's entirely inappropriate. And remember, this isn't the only thing that's happened this week. There have been three Obama, uh, sorry, I should say Obama appointed judges who also donated to the Obama campaign who have now ruled against the Trump administration this week. And at the end of the day, when these are supposedly clear cut constitutional issues, like this judge said, why are these Democrats filing cases in places like Oakland, like New York, like Washington, D.C.? It's not by accident. It's because they have no agenda in 2020. They have to do everything they can to shut down the president. And this is what they're going to do. And Mustafa, is this a way to you know, delay and defeat the border wall? Yeah, I find it ironic that on Memorial Day, we're talking about the president taking money away that was meant by the Congress for the Army personnel and moving it to a border wall that Mexico was supposed to pay for. But putting that aside for a minute, uh, look, the, the president should have learned this in the third grade, and we all did, which is the power of the purse is with the Congress. And it's a very clear separation of powers. The Congress appropriated the money to go to Army personnel, and the president wants to use it for something else. This is the presidency, not the imperial presidency of Donald Trump. And we all have to live under the Constitution. And President Trump's going to need to learn that. So, Peter, what is your answer to that? Because that is the, the argument coming from the Democratic side that, you know, he doesn't have the right to, to move this money over. Who is That's politicizing the, the process? Argument. That's the constitutional argument. It's not a Democratic I, argument. I, I, it's I, a constitutional I think, argument. I, I think the left... The left likes to selectively adopt the term constitutional argument. Look, in 2007, you had Nancy Pelosi share a Washington Post article on her speaker's website, basically saying that half of Bush's judges were unqualified because of their supposed political connections. And now we have another clear constitutional case, supposedly, according to Judge Howard Gilliam. But at the same time, you have Democrats like Nancy Pelosi who are basically filing parallel cases to this same case in all these district courts trying to get national injunctions. And at the end of the day, you can cry constitutional foul all you want, but if you haven't stood for constitutional principles at all in your politics, why are you coming on here and talking about the Constitution? Yeah, Mustafa, it does appear that they are what you could call judge shopping around the country to see where they can find a judge who will stop something you know, in the process. That's a talking point by the Trump administration. This is a clear-cut case. The judge wrote a lengthy uh, dissertation on this, clearly looking out what the Constitution law is. You're not going to find a lot of constitutional scholars argue about this case. The Trump administration is losing in the courts because it only has political arguments, not legal arguments. And the three branches of government that we are under the Constitution have to be respected, and the President Trump and his supporters have to come to the conclusion that we live in the United States of America where we have a constitution and no man is above the law, mm -hmm. including the president of the United States. All right. Well, th thank you both for joining us. We appreciate it. You know, the, as we said at the beginning, the president has asked for this uh, expedited appeal. Uh, Peter, we lost his shot there, but thank him as well. Mustafa, we appreciate it.